Okay, today we're going to cover kind of a peculiar model that often gives principles of microeconomic students quite a bit of a headache, but it's not as bad as it seems, although the graph looks very goofy. Uh, this is a model uh, of oligopoly behavior known as the kink demand curve model. And as the name suggests, you can see that there's a kink in the demand curve. You're, you have a downward sloping demand curve, uh, D1, and then suddenly the demand curve becomes very, very steep at D2. First of all, before we even get into the nitty gritty about this, let's just even talk about why that even would happen, right? Well, imagine that you have an oligopolistic industry in which there's just a handful of firms. Maybe there's three of them, all right? So if you've got three firms, and let's just assume for the sake of argument that all three firms start off by colluding. That is that they're all producing at P star and they're all producing at Q star. So that means they're right here along the demand curve. All right. Now, the question we would have to ask ourselves is this. If any one of those firms were to raise its price, which one of these demand curves does it make sense that they would actually be looking at? This one, the D demand curve D1? or this one, demand curve D2. Now, I've kind of chopped off the rest of those demand curves, so I'm going to draw them in, but I'm going to draw them in with a dotted line. So we can just imagine, for example, that we had this, whoops, didn't do such a good job there. We can imagine that this demand curve uh, still was moving out in this direction, upward to the left. Not very pretty, but you get the idea. That's the rest of demand curve two, without drawing as a solid line. And demand curve one, if we had drawn the rest of it, would look like this as well, downward sloping. And again, not real pretty, but you get the general idea. So that's the rest of demand curve one. All right, now, the, the question before us is, if one of these firms decides to raise its price, what's the most reasonable thing to assume about the rivals and how they're going to respond? That they're going to follow you or that they're going to match you? In other words, are they going to follow you and walk over the cliff? <laughs> or uh, are they going to just let you walk over the cliff? You're all, all, by, all by yourself with the higher price. Well, the bottom line is the latter. Let you walk over the cliff. And so if that's the case, you're going to be faced with a very, very elastic demand curve. So just for kicks, let's say that you tried this stunt of raising price to P2. Well, that would be disastrous for you because you would see your sales plummet from Q star all the way down here. So that's what the demand curve looks like if you want to try to raise prices, right? Of course, if you want to try to lower prices, you're probably not looking at Dan demand curve one. Why is that? Because by lowering price, firms are not going to ignore you. They're going to follow you because they don't want to be left holding the bag with the higher price, right? So if let's say the firm had decided that it's going to, one firm decides it's going to be rogue and it's going to go with P1. Well, what's going to happen here is that sales are going to increase, but not by that much because everyone's lowering their price. The whole industry is lowering their price. Did you see that? So that means we have a steeper demand curve when we cut prices but we have a flatter demand curve when we increase prices. And that's the reason why we have this kink. So just imagine that it turns out that we really are faced with this marginal cost curve. We really are faced with this demand curve D1 and this down downward sloping demand curve D2 when there's price cuts. If each firm is maximizing profits, it's going to cruise right there at Q star and it's going to stay put right there at at P star, it's not going to move. That's going to be the profit maximizing output level. Now, one of the things that's not very satisfying about this model is, let's assume, just for kicks, that the entire industry managed to be able to reduce its marginal cost such that that wasn't the marginal cost curve anymore. That this is the marginal cost curve, right? Well, here is the weird thing about this model. Even though that's the case, MC equals MR right here at Q star. But if you go up, you're still at the same price. And that's at least got to be a problem. In other words, 
That seems counterintuitive, that you lower your marginal cost, but your output level and your price doesn't change. And that's kind of a shortcoming of this kink demand curve model. Anyway, it's an interesting construct. It probably doesn't apply to the real world, which you must wonder why is it even in textbooks any longer. But if you're having to learn this, I've made this video just for you, even though perhaps we probably shouldn't take it all together too seriously. In any event, until next time, take care and best wishes.